So far we have discussed the essential meaning of Satipatthana, both from the theoretical and practical aspects. So perhaps by this time, those yogis who have attentively listened to the talk would should now understand it properly, especially for those who have already understood the meaning of Satipatthana. They can they'll be able to digest properly. And uh, so so far, since the meaning of Satipatthana has been discussed, today we shall just uh, conclude the meaning with the expedition of the qualities of Satipatthana such as Akantaitava Pavodhiti, Patraitava Pavodhiti, Akantaitava Pavodhiti, and so on. The essential meaning of Satipatthana is to activate mindfulness continuously on the object of attention. Now to do that, we need to do to the best of our ability. Supreme quality is needed is what is that is needed. It is given by the expression pa as the supreme or special quality of Satipatthana. It is the mindfulness which is activated, is it just in an ordinary sense, ordinary act, ordinary activation, ordinary fixing of the mind on the object? It is not so. Is it ordinary penetration of your mind into the object? It is not so. Or is it without any force? It is not so. It has to be with force and proper penetration and activation. Not just uh, skimming over it or half-heartedly, or partially. It has to be done with the best of your ability. It has to be of supreme quality. And by, by being able to penetrate it with force and activation. But when you do so, do you have to do it in a hurry? If you do it in a hurry, you will overshoot it. You don't do it in a hurry. You do it properly, meticulously, so that your noting mind will be able to cover up, grasp the object, and be able to spread over the object of meditation in, in its entirety. Such qualities are being given in the text, and we have explained, or we have discussed these things one by one. So, if you do that in the in this in this sense, in the spirit of uh, Saripatana, then you are bound to progress day by day. Once you are able to grasp this correct practice. You aim at the object. You note so that your very mind is probably aimed at the object of attention. This aiming is a jhanic factor, a factor of jhana absorption. Then you apply energy. So if you apply these two mental powers, energy and aiming or position, then you are bound to obtain the best quality of the tip. Then you will not miss the object. Instead, you will be able to grasp the object. If you are able to grasp the object in this way, you are bound to concentrate your mind on the object. As it, as it said, about the quality of samadhi, 
อาไปคิดบ่สมาธิ concentration is such that the mind doesn't go anywhere else it doesn't run away nor is there any distraction instead it falls calm and collected on the object of attention that is the nature of samadhi as much as you are able to activate your mindfulness you are bound to concentrate your mind on the object you don't need to make effort to concentrate if you are able to activate mindfulness then your mind is bound to become concentrated as soon as you are able to grasp the object there's there will be concentration and the mind will fall calm and collected on the object of attention that is the function of the of samadhi concentration it falls calm and collected on the object of attention this is the function of samadhi consolidation of the mind on the object since the mind doesn't go anywhere else there's no distraction the mind falls the mind is becomes concentrated it falls calm and collected on the object of attention so that this is the manifestation of concentration samadhi and this kind of concentration is known as kanika samadhi momentary concentration with the application of these two mental powers energy and precision or aiming you are bo- you are you are bound to gain concentration if you apply one moment of sat- sati is bound to be one moment of concentration if you apply if you activate 10 moments of sati you are bound to gain 10 moments of samadhi and if you activate 100 times 100 moments of sati you are bound to gain 100 moments of samadhi concentration so initially you have this aiming power you aim your mind at the object as much as you aim your mind the noting mind will be concurrent with the object and as much as it is concurrent as bound to be concentration and as much as you gain concentration you are bound to gain the true knowledge of the object noted that is called panya wisdom or knowledge now this kind of knowledge is not the knowledge which you can you gain from teachers or books or hearsay or imagination or fantasies instead it is the knowledge gain from your own experience known as atta pachaka experiential knowledge or direct knowledge and this is known as samadhi samadhi the right understanding or right view and aiming correctly is samadhi sangapa and concentrating rightly is samadhi samadhi because in the beginning it's not able to note in a concurrent manner there's no assurance that your noting mind will be concurrent with the object or you you be able to aim at the object concurrently no you will be able to apply energy consistently in the beginning but you need practice in order to aim and apply energy sometimes you be able to hit the object sometimes you miss it sometimes you will you be able to grasp the object sometimes you will you, you might overshoot it or miss it and not being able to grasp it like the case of target shooting shooting uh, uh, with the arrow or gun to hit the ball's eye bullseye 
you hit the target, you aim it. Of course, you aim to hit the center point, but you don't hit it all the time. Sometimes your arrow or the bullet might reach the, might get into the circle, close to the bullseye. But so long as you don't overshoot it, you don't miss it, it is good enough. Of course, there is no assurance that uh, you will be able to hit it, hit the bullseye in the beginning. Charo says that uh, he has not had any practice about shooting or target practice. Only once he has handled a gun when he was young. But he played marble in his young days. And when he played marble, he aimed his marble at the opponent's object. And sometimes he hits, sometimes he hit, sometimes he missed. In the beginning, of course, he was not able to hit it. Sometimes he hit it, sometimes at other times he missed it. But with the practice, he was able to <coughs> hit the opponent's marble, and what, what happened? <coughs> he was so happy, overjoyed, he jumped with joy, became light, light-spirited, <coughs> because he was so happy that he, he was able to hit it, hit the target, and he was very happy at that. So, you need aiming. You need a practice of aiming. That is Samasankapa or Vitaka, alternately. <coughs> Samasankapa or Vitaka. That is right aiming. And the right energy that you apply is Samavayama. So, with the practice, as much as you practice, You are, you'll be able to hit the target so that in due course it becomes your second nature. You don't have to exert purposely. And as you apply this sati and samadhi, you are bound to hit the target, know the object. And if you are able to hit it, if you are able to note it properly and concentrate your mind, you are bound to see things in their true nature. Of course, in the beginning, you will not see the true nature. <coughs> Excuse me. We call it in, uh, in Pali, Sabhava. That is the essential nature of the object. So let us now, from now on, just say Sabhava. There are three things that you observe during noting, whether you note during sitting or walking. In sitting you note the rising and falling of the abdomen, and in walking you note the movement of your foot. Now first of all, you will be seeing the form and manner, and not yet the sabhava, the essential nature. Form means when you're noting during sitting, you might see the abdomen, your abdomen. And when you're walking, you might see your foot. That is seeing the form. Seeing the manner means when you're noting rising and falling, you will only observe rising and falling of the abdomen. And during walking, you will see the lifting, moving and placing of your foot or bending and stretching of your limbs. All these observations, observations of form and manner, are concepts, not the ultimate realities of sabhava. <clears throat> but as you go on practicing, you will see sabhava going beyond 
the form and manner. You see the essential nature beyond the form and manner, such as when you're noting during sitting, rising of the abdomen, you, you will notice the stiffness, tension, movement, heat, cold, and so on during rising of the abdomen. And you, when you're noting falling, noting the falling as the falling, you might observe relaxation, movement, heat, cold, whatever. These things are the sabhava, essential nature, uh, essential qualities. So, in this way, you, uh, you, you will see the essential nature, step by step, and this is quite encouraging. These observations are your real observation, experiential knowledge, experiential uh, knowledge gained through experience. That is saying the form manner or the sabhava. As we have said, in the beginning you won't be able to see the sabhava, the essential nature. But during reporting to your meditation teacher, you just mention whatever you observe. Not from your imagination or thoughts or fantasies. Just like when we do research, you report, we report in our research project the actual observations, not our imaginations, in simple language, not in complicated language, so long as it is understandable. That is the real research. Now it is already, it will already be two, two weeks already now, and perhaps the yogis might have become settled in their practice, seeing the true nature of the objects, and it is quite encouraging. Charo says he is very proud of it, and he is happy to see yogis being able to practice in this way. Every time you activate your mindfulness and know the object, uh, you are able to concentrate your mind. But you need, as a, a forerunner of the, uh, in the practice, the force of the practice. Force means, in order to be able to do it energetically, you need faith and see called Chanda and Pali. Knowing the advantages and benefits of the practice of Satipatthana, you come to accept it, that is having faith, and with faith you will be able to become uh, desirous to undertake the object, that is your zeal, Chanda. Because you know the understanding, the benefits, you will wish to gain these benefits. That is your zeal. Then only there will be force in the, in the practice. This is the basis. Without force, without this energy, without this faith and zeal, you will not be able to activate your mindfulness. You will not be able to undertake the practice meticulously. And with zeal, you will undertake the practice, step by step, aiming your mind at the object, applying your energy. In this way, you will be able to energize your mental powers. And as much as you undertake them, there will be more and more energy. And you will be able to undertake your uh, activity of mindfulness with force, 
<coughs> see, and be able to hit the object with the mindfulness, with the force of mindfulness. That will be good. And as much as your noting mind is concurrent with the object, you will see things in their true nature. And seeing this sabhava, you will be overcoming and subduing or winning over the kilesas, the defilements, in a very wonderful manner. So every mindfulness is essential, is important. Application of energy is samavayama. With the application of this energy, vayama, you will not accept the defilements, kilesas. Instead, you will overcome them. And with the activation of mindfulness sati, your mind is protected from kilesas, defilements. And with the mindfulness, you will be able to gain concentration. In this way, you will be able to practice the three energies, uh, the three mental states, namely virya, sati, samadhi. And this group is known as samadhi khanda, the concentration group, or Samadhi Seka, concentration training, or Samadhi Sadhana, concentration teaching. Now, at this moment, you will be able to calm and subdue the hindrances to progress, beginning with the hindrance of sense desires, Kamichanda Nivaranas. And subduing them, or calming them, or overcoming them, you are said to have gained samatha, tranquility concentration, tranquility practice. And with this, you are able to overcome and subdue the obsessive type of mindfulness known as pariyotana kilesas. And they will have no chance to raise their heads. So that's, this is the result of Samadhi, Saika. So that these kilesas will not, will not become obsessed to these kilesas. They are said to have subdued them, or overcome them, or calm them. And with the aiming of your loading mind at the object, as much as you aim it correctly and precisely, you are bound to see the true nature of the objects. And this gives rise to Penya Saika, Penya Khanna, the wisdom group or pinya 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 seka concentrate the wisdom uh, training or pinya sasana wisdom teachings. So every time you see this, uh, you know the uh, uh, sabava, uh, you are said to have practice or gain the three samadhi seka concentration group and the two Pinyaseka wisdom group. All these five factors are said to have gained. In the beginning, you are sustaining your sila so as not to break or weaken them. Sustaining the sama vaya or practiced the sila seka or sila sasana. Morality training, morality teachings, by which you are said to have subdued or overcome the transgressive or cross forms of kilesas, known as Vitekama kilesas. So in this way, you overcome the three forms of kilesas, defilements, the gross, medium and refined form, namely Vitekama kilesas, the transgressive types of kilesas, defilements, the pariyakrana kilesa, the obsessive types of defilements, defilements which can arise in your mind, and anusya kilesas, a fine form of 
que les hace latent tendencies which lie dormant in your mind. So now you are said to have gained the upper hand over these kilesas, the three types of kilesas, the three grades of kilesas, every moment of your practice. Since kilesas are hot, they can produce heat, mental heat. Now if you are free from these kilesas, if your kilesas are subdued or calm, then you are bound to realize peace, gain peace of mind. And this peace, of course, is momentary. And you have to accumulate this momentary peace into a greater peace. You have to gain the partial peace on a partial basis. Try to practice to gain the peace on a partial peace, partial peace in order to accumulate to, to gain the greater peace in due course. So every practice, this and, and every, every practice that is involved, there are three trainings, Sila Samari Penya, which in effect is a noble part of eight constituents. When you are doing this uh, practice in the right way, you are practicing the three trainings of Sila Samari Penya and you are said to be fulfilled with this sasana training, training or teaching. You are said to uh, possess uh, the qualities of this, the three trainings. This is known as sasana sampati, fulfillment with the teachings. This, uh, this leads to the cultivation of your physical, verbal and mental behaviors. And uh, uh, this is not, uh, uh, this objective is not achieved without, without doing anything, for nothing. You practice such as listening to the talks respectfully and carefully and practice continuously by noting every arising object. So by knowing the practice and the, the practice of the right the right method, the correct practice, you activate your mindfulness at every object which arises with full force. That means mobilizing all the factors, mental states as we have already discussed. And every time you observe this sabhava, the essential nature of the object, you are said to be practicing the three trainings of Silas Mari Penya. And this is what is meant by the development of individual sasana, individual uh, training, or individual teaching. And with this, you can overcome also the three grades of Kilesas, the cross, medium, and refined. ยูซูสกานะกิวาลิชิเยตรีปทานะยูกุตินาเลยยูจีจีเนะอจุยะลุเดสิกสานะอเปญเนปอนิชิคไคโกมะโลตาไลชูนีเดไลชูนีโลต
and the movement arising, you see sabhava. That is the maximum. Or you see sabhava when you note at the very moment. As the Buddha has given, the monks, whoever he or she may be, or he, may, he or she may be monks or lady, if one does not practice the full noble path of uh, the full, full mindfulness, Satipatthana, then one will miss it. Even if one is uh, doing it, if one does not do it properly, then one will not be able to practice the three trainings, gain the three trainings. If one does not know what every arising of physical object with the practice of the mindfulness of the body and not noting every sensations of feelings with the practice of the mindfulness of sensations or feelings, and not noting every mental object with the mindfulness of the mind, <coughs> excuse me, and not being able to know the general objects with the mindfulness of the Dharma, general activities, then one is, uh, if one is not, in, 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 in short, one is not noting the immediately arisen object, then one is said to be alienated from the practice of Satipatthana. If there is no Satipatthana, no practice of Satipatthana, whoever it may be, then one is said to be alienated from the noble path of a constituents. No Satipatthana, no Eightfold Path. And there will be no three trainings of Sila, Samadhi and Penya. If there is no training of Sila, Samadhi and Penya, one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors will not be cultivated. And uh, if one is not able to sustain Sila, then one will not be able to overcome or subdue the cross forms of Kilesas. If one is not able to calm the mind or concentrate the mind, then one will not be able to overcome or subdue the obsessive types of defilements. And if one is not able to see things in their true nature, gain, penya or wisdom, then one will not be able to overcome the latent tendencies of kilesas. Instead, all these kilesas will gain the upper hand instead of you gaining the upper hand. In fact, you are you are to gain the upper hand. You are you are the you, are, you should be the victor. You should gain victory over all these opposite elements. And uh, that's why it is said that one should uh, one should guard your mind with vigilant mindfulness. And if one is uh, alienated from the three trainings of Silas Maripena, one will be alienated from Sasana. Gol Kilisa Mara, the killer. Kilisa, the killer. Now, if we uh, just practice to just uh, do according to Kilisa Mara or let them gain the upper hand, not gaining over or not gaining the upper hand over Kilisas instead. If the kilisas, let the kilisas gain the upper hand. Then uh, these kilisas are very tormenting and very hot. They, they cause heat. They cause tension, stress, and so on. Since they are very hot, they are burning. There will be no peace. So in this connection, one uh, American yogi talked to Seattle openly 
And the story goes like this. When he was young, he was able to earn money, accumulate wealth, he got married, but he felt that something was missing. He was not able to sustain all the five precepts. He was breaking all of them. He did all sorts of things. At the same time, of course, he was earning his living and he was making a lot of money, but there was no peace. His wife spent all the money and took away all the money and got away with the money so that he became very worried. He tried to calm his mind by, by resorting to all sorts of things available to him, but there was no peace of mind. So, later, luckily, he got a new wife, a Dhamma wife this time, who asked him to practice the Dhamma. So, accordingly, he practiced the Dhamma and he was able to calm his mind. From that time on, he was able to sustain the five precepts. He was able to abstain from practicing, from uh, committing all sorts of evil things, knowing the benefits of the Dhamma, he practiced regularly from that time on. And uh, he was very much pleased with it and he was happy with his beautiful wife. Prior to the practice of Satipatthana, of course, Kilesas gained the upper hand. If the Gilesa has gained the upper hand, you, you are bound to do all sorts of unwholesome deeds and you will not gain any peace of mind. So when one comes into the realm of Satipatthana, then one's, you know, one's actions, one's conduct becomes corrected. And this is how this uh, yogi related his story to Seattle. This applies not only to this American yogi, but to everybody in the world. If one uh, indulges oneself in oneself, one will, not be, one will not be able to control or cultivate one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors. Indulgence leads to misery, leading to wrongdoing. So though one may be wealthy, one will not be able to lead a peaceful life. So later when one practices the city Patana, although one may lose somewhat on the worldly side, one is gaining on the spiritual side by cultivating one's physical, verbal, mental behaviors, gaining the peace of mind. This is a life, the benefit of the life. Gain the benefit of the life and gain of the life. So, whenever this yogi is seen around, he's always smiling. His face is very bright and he's always light-spirited. And his business also is progressing, becoming very good. So the practice of the Satipatthana, one is practicing the Noble Pathway Constituents and the three trainings of Sila Samadhi Pinya, and thus will be able to control or cultivate one's behaviors by body, speech and mind. <coughs> Only in this, in, in this uh, connection the Buddha has said that bhikkhus whoever it may be, maybe a monk or a lady, he one practices Sati Bharana in accordance with the discourse on the mindfulness that the Buddha has preached and as the teachers have guided, but not without practice, but not without, but not just with fantasies, imaginations, gazing here and there, or not practicing uh, respectfully and carefully. But one must should practice meticulously, 
in accordance with the instructions. Then, whatever, uh, whatever, noting whatever arises, it may be physical object, it may be feelings or sensations, it may be mind objects or mental objects, or it may be the general activities, general objects. Then, whoever is fulfilled with this practice is walking the, the path of the Ariya Mega, that is the noble path. One is walking the noble path. So, with the practice of the Kaya Vena Chaita Dhamma, the, or the practice of uh, objects of body, sensations, mind, and Dhamma, one will be practicing the noble path of eight constituents and the three trainings. Thus, will be able to overcome the gross, medium, and refined forms of kilisas. And in this way, one will find answer to one's life's problems and to answer and gain the answer of the practice. This expression, atengiko mego, ryo atengiko mego. We have explained atengiko mego, atengiko, atengiko, that means eightfold, eightfold. That means uh, of eight parts or eight factors. And this mega, the path, has been qualified with a rio. A rio is given as paris of door, pure, outermore, highly, or sublime. This happens only when you are fulfilled with the three trainings of Silas Mari Penya. Otherwise, there will be no purity. Without purity, there will be no sublimation, no high standard, high level standard, go to more. So every time one practices mindfulness, one is practicing the noble path of eight constituents, then with the sila, one overcomes the gross forms. Even if one may be, uh, if, even if one is uh, wealthy or of high standard with uh, uh, high level you know uh, position if one uh, is not of good conduct then one will become one will become defiled so even if one is not well the one is one does not possess wealth if one practices satipatthana in the right way as much as one practices if one is fulfilled with sila then one will be able to cultivate one physical and verbal behaviors and one become pure and uplifted. If one is able to gain concentration, one will be able to cultivate one's mind so that one's mind be- will become uplifted. If one gains penya, then one also one will be able to overcome the latent tendencies and one will become uplifted. So this is just purification of physical, verbal, and mental behaviors in the worldly sense. And we accumulate this purity until at last one was with the fulfillment of the inside knowledge, Vivasananyana, one becomes full, one one reaches a stage of the ultimate cultivation of physical, verbal, mental behaviors on a full time basis. That is the realization of the fast path. Sarapana. So uh, with this uh, you go. You can go beyond the stage of the state of the putrajana ordinary world beings who are who are in possession or who are uh, overcome with thick forms of kilesas. So, with the practice of Satipatthana, Satipatthana gives you assurance in order to go beyond this stage of the Buddhajana who has who has or who have kilisas. The kilisas are very uh, burning, has a burning effect, tormenting. So with the practice of Satipatthana, you should gain victory over these kilisas and thus be able to realize the ultimate peace. That's all for today. Sad.